Hey guys, today we're going to talk about non-proportional graphs. We're going to answer the question, how are non-proportional linear relationships represented in graphs? So non-proportional linear relationships are a line and they have two main characteristics, a rate of change and an initial value. So let's talk about the rate of change first. Non-proportional linear graphs have a rate of change or the change in y over the change in x. So remember the y-axis is the up and down axis and the x-axis is the left and right axis. So to find this rate of change, what you're going to do is count the vertical or y-axis change and divide it by the horizontal or x-axis change between two points on a graph. So this rate of change is basically what makes the line. You go up and over by the same amount throughout the whole line and that's the rate of change and that's why it's a line because it has that constant rate of change. One other important thing to notice is if the line is going down from left to right, then the rate of change is going to be negative. So you'll have to put a negative sign. Okay, another key characteristic that non-proportional lines have is an initial value. So non-proportional linear graphs do not go through the origin. So instead they have a point zero y which is the initial value, or sometimes you'll hear it called the y-intercept, and it's represented with the letter b. So once you have these two things, the rate of change, which is your m value, and the initial value, which is your b value, you can write your equation. An equation for a non-proportional linear graph can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, where m is that rate of change, your change in y over the change in x, and b is the initial value, which is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So let's take a look at number one and find these two things. So the rate of change is our change in our y values divided by our change in our x values. So what you're gonna do on a graph is you're gonna find two points. It can be any two points on the line that are perfectly going through four corners on a graph. So like this one is not going through a corner on a graph, so that would not work. So these two points right here would work. And you want to figure out how much you changed from this point to this point in the Y values and the X values. So let's count the Y values first. I changed one, two. And then I'm going to count how much I changed in my x values, how much I went over, which is 1. So my change in y over the change in x is 2 over 1 or 2. So there is our rate of change or m value. One important thing I forgot to point out is this line was going up. It is positive. So my rate of change is a positive 2. Okay, then the next thing I need to look for is my initial value. This is where we cross the y-axis. Remember, we are not going through the origin since this is non-proportional. So I'm going to look for where this line crosses the y-axis and that's my initial value. And we are crossing the y-axis at one. So my initial value is one, which is my b value. So now I'm ready to write my equation in y equals mx plus b form. My y or my m, my rate of change value is 2. And then my b, my initial value is 1. So my equation for this line is y equals 2x plus 1. Okay, let's look at the next graph. The first thing I notice about the rate of change is this line is going up again, so it is positive. And I want to find two points on this line so I can find the rate of change between them. So I see one point right here, and then I'm looking for another point where it goes through the corners of the graph, which is right here. So now I'm gonna find my rate of change by figuring out my change in Y values over the change in the X values. So I'm gonna count my vertical change first for that Y change, and I go up two. 
And then my horizontal change between those two points is my change in my x values, and I went over 1, 2, 3. So my rate of change is 2 over 3, which cannot be simplified any further. So that is the value that I'll use for m in my equation. Okay, now let's find the initial value where I am crossing the y-axis. And the line is crossing the y-axis at negative 3, so that is my b value. So now I'm ready to write my equation in y equals mx plus b form. It'll be y equals my m value, my rate of change was 2 thirds, and then make sure to put x, and then my b value, the initial value is negative 3. So there is my equation. Okay, number three, the first thing I notice about this graph is this line is going down. So my rate of change is going to be negative. So we'll need to make sure to put a negative sign. It is still the same process for finding the rate of change though. I'm gonna find the change in y over the change in x between two points. So I see one point right here where it's going through corners and then I'm going to keep following the line there's another point right there if you wanted to use this point you could as well because it's going through corners there you can use any two points on the line but I'm just going to use those first two I saw okay now I want to find the change in my y values well first thing I'm going to do is put the negative so I don't forget that because this line is going down and now I'm going to find the change in my y values my vertical change between those two points, which is one, two, three. And then I'll find the change in my x values, which I'm going over one. So my rate of change is negative three over one, which simplifies to negative three. So that's what I'm gonna use for my m value. Okay, next thing I need to find is my initial value where I'm crossing the y-axis. which It looks like I'm crossing the y-axis at positive four, so that will be my b value. So my equation in y equals mx plus b form is y equals negative three x plus four. Okay, let's look at this next scenario. It says, Billy pays $15 for snacks at the movies plus $10 for each ticket. Create a graph and write an equation that can be used to find Y, the total money Billy spends after X number of tickets. So they gave me two numbers here, 15 and 10, and I wanna figure out which one is the rate of change and which one is the initial value. So he's gonna pay $15 for snacks at the movies and then $10 for each ticket. So my $10 for each ticket is going to be my rate of change because that's going to be what this relationship is changing by. Each time he pays for a ticket or buys a ticket, he's going to have to pay $10. So that'll be my M value. And then the initial value is what he pays for snacks. It just says he pays $15 for snacks. He's not doing that multiple times. So that's going to be what he pays initially and that'll be my b value. So then my equation is y equals 10x plus 15. So let's see if we can represent this on the graph. So if he hasn't bought any tickets yet, if he's bought zero tickets, he still has paid that $15 for snacks. So I'm gonna put that initial value b 15 on the y axis. Okay, then he's paying $10 for each ticket, which is my rate of change. So let's figure out where our next point is gonna go. So if he's bought zero tickets, he's paid $15. If he's bought one ticket, he's paid $10 on top of that. So he has gone up to $25 for one ticket. Then two tickets, we would add another $10 and we would go up to $35. Three tickets, we'd add another $10 and go to 45. And that's all that's going to fit on this graph. And he won't be able to buy anything between zero and one tickets or 
one and two tickets. They're not going to let him buy a partial ticket. So we're not going to connect these lines. We're going to leave them disconnected. We're not going to connect these points. We're going to leave them disconnected to show that. So there is the equation y equals 10x plus 15, and there is the graph to show this. All right, let's look at the next scenario. It says Jasmine had a pack of gum, then gave away a certain number of pieces to each friend. So the first question says, how many pieces of gum did Jasmine initially have? So before she gave any away, she's given pieces away to zero friends. It looks like she had 12 pieces of gum based on this graph. Then it says, how many pieces of gum did Jasmine give to each friend? So this graph is going down. Let's see if we can figure out how many pieces she gave to each friend. So she had 12 and then after she gave away pieces to one friend, she had 10. So it looks like she went down two. And then she had 10 pieces, gave away one to a friend or gave away some pieces to a friend and it looks like she's at eight pieces now. So again, we went down two. So how many pieces of gum did Jasmine give to each friend? Well, it looks like that pattern continues. So she gave away two. Okay, now it wants us to um, write the equation for this situation. So let's identify my rate of change and my initial value. My initial value is the 12 my B value, the amount that she initially had, and then my rate of change is negative two to show that she's giving two pieces to each friend. So my equation in Y equals MX plus B form is Y equals negative two X plus 12 to show that she started with 12 pieces of gum and gave away two to each friend. All right, last one, it says, during a hurricane, St. Petersburg, Florida has already gotten two inches of rain. It continues to rain at a rate of four inches per hour, which graph best represents this situation? So the first thing it told me is they've already got two inches of rain. So that is my initial value. So I need to find a graph that shows my initial value is two. So if you look at graph A, my initial value, is four, so that's not gonna work. So that eliminates A. But B and C both have an initial value at two. Okay, then it says it continues to rain at a rate of four inches per hour. So I need a graph that's showing that rate of four inches per hour. So at hour zero, both of these graphs are at two. If it rains four inches per hour, then it one hour I would be at six inches of rain because two plus four is six, um, which graph B does not show, but graph C does show that. It's showing that this rate of change is increasing by four inches every one hour. So C is the answer here.